What's up, you guys? Avery here, and ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another tier list video. Now, before we get into it, be sure to destroy the ever living crap out of that subscribe button and the like button because I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because, like, I have rogue tier two in a booty booty butt cheek category for decks. I don't know if it's just because I'm blunt about what decks are good and what decks aren't, but I always seem to get like five or six dislikes whenever I make these tier list videos. And I genuinely have no idea why, because they get a bunch of views, they get a good number of comments, so I don't know where all the dislikes are coming from. So please destroy that like button so that we can keep the trolls away or whoever's getting pissed off about the format. Like, I get if you don't enjoy this format, but like, don't be coming and hating on my video, bro. So anyways, YCS Hartford just happened, and I want to talk about what the meta is, because we finally have an idea of what it looks like and uh spoiler alert it's triple demise of the land and triple mystic mind the fucking format i'm telling you right now mystic mind is finally going to get fucking banned and if it doesn't lord have mercy splite's going to be a fucking bloodbath while i'm drinking my sprite um i also want to say i don't know why there's a picture of a fucking trash can here because like I, I i literally just found this tier list on tier maker like i don't know how to make these um so I don't know why someone put a trash can here, uh, but we're just going to go ahead and put that in the butt cheek category. Um, so yeah, I also want to say too, this list doesn't have Therions. Um, I would not change Therions from what I had previously, which was in tier 1.5. I feel that overall, the Therion ABC stuff and the plant stuff, I feel that that's a solid tier 1.5. I feel that they are good regional toppers, they're good for locals, and they can potentially surprise people at high-level YCS events and nationals and things like that. So I will say right out of the gate that that is a solid tier 1.5 deck. If it starts falling off and people aren't playing it, people don't really favor it, what have you, then yes, it will fall to that tier 2 and rogue strategy, but I don't think it'll ever be in the booty booty butt cheek category. And who knows, maybe we'll see a resurgence of it once we get splite and the format changes and then we get a ban list. You know, who knows? So, anyway, let's go ahead and start off here at the Tier 1. Obviously, it's Branded Despia. If you don't know that Branded Despia is the best deck of the format, you're living under a rock. This is the best deck of the format. This deck is good. It did just come in second place at the YCS in Hartford, and that's not to say it's a bad deck by any stretch of the imagination. It is the best deck in the room. However, when you have high representation, when you have a high number of people playing the deck, when you have a high amount of coverage on the deck, people are going to prepare for the best decks in the room. They're going to prepare on how to beat Branded Despia. They're going to learn the choke points. Same with Sword Soul. Had high representation at the YCS. People know how to beat fucking Sword Soul. People have figured out the formioli to beating Sword Soul. That does not mean that it's suddenly a tier two or a rogue deck. It just means that the formula has been solved. But if you're able to pop off and the opponent can't stop you, they don't open up any hand traps, it doesn't matter if they know how to beat your fucking deck because you opened up better than they did and you're just going to win because of it. So do not discount Sword Soul just because the formula has been solved. Same for, same for Branded Despia. Now, with that being said, I will say that Flunderies and Sword Soul are close second place for being the Tier 1 decks in the format. Flunder is basically a one-card engine if you open up Flunderies Robina because of the fact that, you know, it, you can just have Empen and Barrier Statue searching it off of the Robina or you grab Eaglin. Like, it all depends on what your opening hand is, right? But... Ending on M pin and barrier statue and the opponent doesn't hand trap you, you should win the game. This deck did not get touched at all on any ban list so far, and it's still a very solid deck. If you're playing Flunder, you're playing a tier one deck. I think that that's not a debate now between tier 1.5 and tier one. Uh, has it won a YCS yet? No, but I would make the argument that it is a good tier one deck. Even against stuff like Rogue, it has a good showing. Hell, I'd make the argument that this, that Flunder has a better showing against Rogue decks than Branded Eldritch does, especially the 60-card control variants. Which leads me into my next point. As much as I would love to see Eldritch Tier 1, I gotta go with Tier 1.5. Now, this also applies for the 40, 45, 50, 60 card variants. All of the variants of Branded Eldritch this is what is included with this Eldritch picture. Um, it is something that is very much under the radar right now, thank God. The deck can be played in a lot of different ways. Some players play it with a Dogmatica engine. Some don't, like myself. We choose to go the zombie route. It did just top like a 228-man WCQ in Europe. 
So a lot of builds were taking from that build as an example list and going from there. Uh, a guy with the last name of Yanni, I don't know, I don't remember his full name. He did come in top 32 with Brandon Eldridge. I'm assuming that's a 60 card build. And this is a deck that will pants you. It will fucking pants you no matter how prepared you are for it because it's a 60 card deck. Is it playing a Dogmatica engine? Is it not? Is it playing a Branded engine? Is it playing Mystic Mind? Is it not? It, it can really pants people in a room, especially if you're not ready for it. You can fall into into holes, uh, traps, no pun intended, uh, to this deck. This is a very solid tier 1.5, even pure Eldritch. I would think that branded Eldritch is better, but in the hands of a good player, pure Eldritch is, is going to be there in the room. Same goes for Sky Striker. It just won the YCS. Uh, I would almost want to put it up here in tier one, but I feel like because it just won the YCS that everyone's going to be preparing for it. Um, yeah, I, I think it, it is honestly probably the most powerful tier 1.5 deck. Um, especially with Triple Demise of Land and Triple Mystic Mine. Uh, you know, we saw Poe playing Triple Trap Trick and D Barrier and Imperms and just teched the fuck out of his deck. And when you have a good pilot like that playing this deck, you're just going to get rewarded for it all damn day. So, Sky Striker, I mean, if you haven't picked up your stuff, I highly suggest that you do because the stuff's already been going to the moon. We'll probably have a market watch about that later today or tomorrow, depending on when you see this video. Who knows? It may even already be up on the channel by now. Next up, oh boy, let's talk about this. So, Drytron. So, the Drytron player that came in top eight, law, or excuse me, top four, lost to the Sky Striker player that ended up winning the event. And if you are not prepared for this deck, especially now that it has two Ben 10 and no Eva, I think it's going to sneak up on people. Now, does that mean it's going to, you know, be a meta buster and just, you know, destroy everything else? I'm not willing to make that that bet at this point. However, it is a deck that should definitely be respected and it will creep up on you and beat you if you are not prepared for it. And the fact that we saw a player bring it to top four at the YCS should speak volumes for how prepared you should be for this deck. Whether 10 people in the room are playing it or 1,000 people are playing it, you need to be prepared for this deck and you need to know how to stop it. Which, spoiler alert, if you're playing Flunder, you just need to have the fucking barrier statue and they lose the game. <laughs> so, there's that. Um, let's kind of jump around here a little bit. Let's talk about Adventure. So, none of the top decks right now, minus some branded builds, but it's pretty much mutually agreed upon by everybody that branded Despia with no Adventure package is the best way to go. You know, Adventure is still good. I think that it, we will see some sort of consistency hits to it on the balance. I think that we're still going to see the TCG follow the OCG and put Rite of Aramiser as well as Water Enchanters to two, or possibly straight to one on our next balance, because we'll probably have another balance by the time Power of the Elements comes out in roughly two months from this point. Um, but it's still an engine that you need to be aware of. You know, you open up Water Enchanters or Rite of Aramiser, that's going to get you to the token and the Griffin Rider, and they're going to have a Omni Negate on the board to stop you, which in turn, you're going to be playing with one less card in your hand. So, you know, if it, it, it's a drag over from last format, really. And if you're not prepared for it, it's it's going to punish you because of it. Next up in tier 1.5 is Dragon Link. Um, Alba Linatus is a card. That's all I have to say. Dragon Link still does its thing. If you're not prepared for it, you can get punished for it. But I mean, if you're preparing for these tier 1 decks, you're in turn going to be preparing for tier 1.5. Alba Linatus is a card. You set Fallen Albaz on the field and you just you, you contact Fuse off with their shit. It's, it's not too bad. Um, next up... Let's see here. I'm going to put Tri-Brigade in tier 1.5. Tri-Brigade is, is like that uncle in the room that just never leaves the fucking party. <laughs> like, honestly, uh, Tri-Brigade is just always there in the room. Like, it's it's always going to be good. Uh, Flunder has a terrible matchup with it because they don't care about Storm Statue or Barry Statue of the Stormwinds. Um, and it's a solid, consistent, uh, consistent deck. Um there's really not much else to say about Tri-Brigade. If you know how to beat Tri-Brigade, then you're going to beat it. If you don't open up well against it, you're going to lose because of it. Tri-Brigade, uh, it's just sort of there. I still think fucking Tri-Brigade Revolt needs to go to fucking one because that's a fucking return from the different dimension, but I digress. <laughs> um, 
Let's see here. Th I don't know why the fuck this stuff is in this tier list here, but whatever. Um, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna assume that this is like Dagda Scythe Lock, and I'm gonna put this in tier two. Reason being because the Dagda Lock has really fallen off the planet. Like, yeah, it was good last format because you know you could go Anaconda, dump your materials for a DPE, and have the Dagda, and then just go DPE pop, set the scythe, you pop the scythe, you get out the scythe, and all that fun stuff. Like, yeah, the Scythe Lock is a thing, but we're not seeing any of the top decks playing the Scythe Lock. It's just, it's really fallen out of favor. I really think it belongs in Tier 2. If your deck can pull off Scythe Lock, then by all means, run Scythe Lock if, if it doesn't make you brick. But it's not really something that you're having to worry about against these top decks. And if you get hit with it, then I mean, they fucking hit you with it. If you couldn't stop it, then you were probably going to lose that game anyway, in my humble opinion. Um... I also noticed that heroes aren't in this tier maker. This is a really shitty tier list. I'm not going to lie. Like, they did not include a lot of decks here. No offense to whoever made this. Um, but, yeah. So, heroes would definitely go in the rogue because um, DPE is, is really, really good. Um, let's see here. But let's kind of jump around. Prank kids are booty, booty, butt cheeks now. Um, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to put Phantom Knights here in Tier 1.5. It, it was the worst of the Tier 1. I think that they've just been power corrupt. We didn't see this deck at all at Hartford. Like, I think that that should speak for itself. Uh, let's see here. Attic Nister, I'm going to put in Tier 1.5. Reason being because this deck can creep up on you and they have a 6,000 attack Link 6 that just shits on your parade. Um, I I would respect this deck all damn day. Um also in tier 1.5, DDD, we saw it top 32 at the YCS, and any player that's willing to learn the combos, as long as you're not wasting your fucking money on a fucking spreadsheet for $25, good on you, boo-boo. Watch YouTube videos, that shit's for free, uh, as long as you don't need to watch an ad. Uh, let's see here, let's let's jump around. Invoked, tier 2, like you can combine it with these, but it's like, if you're combining it with Invoked, couldn't you make the argument that, like if you're doing that, you might as well just play Branded Despia? In my humble opinion, I don't need people shooting dislikes up my ass. Um, Evil Twins, Rogue. Virtual World, Tier 2, it loses to itself. Um, Madolce is going in booty booty butt cheeks. Uh, salad, I don't give a fuck who says anything about Salad. I hate Salad. Like, there are some decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! that I just despise, and Salad is one of them. Like, they didn't need Circle and Mirage Stallio to come back to 3. I'm tired of saying meta only on EDO Pro, and I get hit with, like, 3 Salad decks in a row. I'm like, bro, please stop. Like, please I'm not going to see this deck at a regional. You might see it at, like, your locals, maybe some regionals in your area, but Salad is rogue. Like, there are two decks in this world that I hate the most, Salad and Atlanteans. Those decks have always just pissed me off, <laughs> and I just, I hate Salad. I'm sorry. I just don't like it. Altergeist is booty, booty, butt cheeks. I don't know what this is supposed to be for Cybers, because we already covered Attic Nister. That's booty, booty, butt cheeks. And then I guess that this is insect control. That's booty booty butt cheeks. Like you just take these decks, toss them in this little garbage can here, and put it out on your on your porch or whatever. So, guys, I know that this was a bit of a long video, but I like to think that this covers the the format for the most part. Like I said, I know that there wasn't some things that were in this tier list that I wanted to cover. Like I said, you know, heroes and Therions, Therions belonging in tier one point five, all forms of Therions. Uh, heroes, of course, all forms of hero belonging in Rogue. I don't really think there's anything else here that was missing from this tier list um, other than some random fucking shit down here at the bottom. Um, and with Prank Kids losing Meow Meow Moo, they're not even on, on this universal planet anymore. Hell, this galaxy, they're just, they're dead. They're long gone. They're two card combos again. They're bad. Um, so, guys, please let me know what you think about this tier list. Was there anything that I missed? Was there a deck that I'm not even thinking about that should have been on this tier list as well? Let me know in the comments below what you think about this format i think really post ycs hartford i think that this format's looking really good until we get splite and then you know everybody's gonna be drinking their sprite while they're playing that splite so guys please thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video